open Blender and just do it! Hey there, I'm Polly Muffin, and today I'll show you how I created this cozy tavern scene in Blender. We'll start by designing the isometric room, then move on to lighting, and I'll even show you a tiny detail you probably never noticed, how I made the candlelight flicker. Finally, I'll demonstrate how I animated the swinging sign outside and the falling snow simulation. All right, let's get started. Make a cube, of course. Or do you want to start with a cylinder? Huh? 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 <clears throat> Sorry, folks, I've been feeling overwhelmed with all the AI stuff lately. Everyone says it's going to be okay, but I don't know. Even this voice you are hearing is AI. Did you listen to my English in my previous video? Well, whatever. I am so confused about it. What's the point we are learning all of these? Okay, let's get started. When starting a project like this, focus on the silhouette first. What are the overall dimensions? Let's begin with a simple isometric view featuring two walls and a floor. First, adjust the camera resolution for a square render. 1080 by 1080 gives you HD quality, but I usually work in 2K, 2048 by 2048. Next, create a camera and go to the camera settings and switch the perspective to orthographic. This is optional, but for isometric scenes, orthographic cameras are typically the way to go. Press zero on your keyboard to switch to the camera view. Then go to the top right, open the view menu and enable camera to view to adjust the camera's position freely. When you press zero, the view might look weird because your camera is too close to the object. Now let's block out the basic room shape. Add a cube and scale it to fit your desired room size. Enter edit mode, select the center vertex and press X, then delete vertices. Right now, it's just a paper-thin outline, so let's add thickness. That's what she said. Switch back to object mode, apply a solidify modifier, and adjust the thickness to your liking. To smooth out sharp edges, apply a bevel modifier. If it looks weird, select the object, press Ctrl A to apply scale to fix it. Now let's add a rounded window to the wall. Add a cube and move it to where you want the window. Select the wall and add a Boolean modifier. Set the Boolean operation to difference and select the new cube as the target object. And voila, your wall now has a hole in the shape of the cube. To see what's happening, go to viewport display and set the cube to wireframe. To make the top part of the window curved, enter edit mode, select the top two edges and use control B to bevel them. Scroll the mouse wheel to adjust the curvature. Once all the props are modeled with their basic forms, I used basically bevel and subdivision modifiers. When we analyze our reference, we see that warm colors dominate the interior, while cool tones define the exterior. Lighting requires some trial and error, so start with an area light, adjusted size, intensity, and position to get the best effect. A larger light source creates softer shadows, while a smaller one gives sharper shadows. For this project, I rendered using cycles with adaptive sampling for better performance. Instead of relying on a single light, I placed multiple sources to create a cozy, layered atmosphere. The main warm light inside mimics candlelight, while the cooler outdoor light contrasts it, adding depth to the scene. Now let's talk about candle flames. I created a small plane and applied a transparent flame texture. 
Since a single plane would look too flat, I duplicated it a couple of times at different angles to create the illusion of depth. By the way, this is the same trick used in video games for trees, grass, and flowers. In real world, candle flames flicker. Maybe it's a bit unnecessary for this project, but hey, why not? So I did it anyway. So I added a wave modifier to the plane. Initially, it might look strange, but just like in life, you need some subdivisions for things to work properly. Tweak the wave modifier's amplitude and speed to create a natural flickering effect. If it looks too rigid, increase the subdivision level on your plane for smoother movement. Finally, a candle flame wouldn't be complete without some glow. Place a point light on top of the flame to enhance the effect. Then, to create the glow effect, I added a sphere and assigned it a volume material. This way, I was able to create a glow only in the area I wanted. To make the sign outside sway in the wind, we need to adjust its pivot point. Select two faces where you want the pivot, Press Shift-S, cursor to selected, switch to object mode, then go to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now when you rotate the sign, it swings from the correct pivot. To animate it, rotate the sign slightly, then go to transform, right click, insert keyframe, add keyframes for the swinging motion, and tweak the timing until it looks natural. To make your animation loop, select the graph editor from the timeline below. Then select one of your keyframes there, go to the right panel, click Add Modifier, and choose Cycles. Now let's make it snow. I'm going to be honest, I completely forgot how I did this at first, but I had to relearn it for this tutorial. <laughs> Lucky for me, I can always check my own tutorial next time. Start by adding a plane as the particle emitter. Go to the Particle System tab and add a new system. If you hit play, you'll see random spheres dropping, but we want custom snowflakes. Not necessarily the snowflake, just a icosphere is fine, I think. Create a simple low poly snowflake, then go to the render section of the particle settings. Set render as object and choose your snowflake as the object. Now the particles will use your snowflake instead of spheres. Adjust size variation to add randomness. By default, this snow falls straight down, but real snow drifts and swirls. Under the Physics tab, increase the Brownian value for a more chaotic motion. Increase damping to make flakes float more gently. If you want the snow to blow in a certain direction, I thought I could make with simply rotate the emitter, but the snow still falls straight down, like my logic, you'll need to add a wind force field to push the flake sideways. You can adjust how long it will rain and intensity. And that's it! Brilliant! <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what's going on. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Also, let me know if you want more tutorials like this. Basically, just write something. Bye!